Happy New Year, Larry Bailey, Awesome Technologies Inc. Hope everybody's doing awesome. Uh, today is January 9th, uh, 2024. I don't know if you remember where you were this time 24 years ago when it was beginning of January 2000 and we all thought we were all going to not have any computers and things were not going to work because of Y2K. Uh, the tree is still up. I, w I just got back from Stowe, Vermont. If anybody wants to know how Stowe, Vermont is, let me know. But um, yeah, we did some snowboarding. I never did get those friggin' Star Trek ornaments up, so I suck. Um, you have to wait till next year. You got to stay with me the entire year just to see those Star Trek ornaments up. What do you think of that? Uh, <laughs> today's... Um, Today's topic is going to be uh, plugins, automation, workflow, and how they all tie together, uh, which is only appropriate um, because um, as of January 1st, uh, the ink is dry. Uh, I am an official co-owner of Awesome Technologies, Inc. Uh, Nor Panjwani and I are the two largest shareholders. There goes my black cat. Uh, and, uh, and what that means is I get to actually uh, create really cool stuff. Oh, I don't actually do the creation. I think of the things that need to be created. And then I have a team of wonderful uh, architects and programmers that are um, based out of Dallas and also based out of Pakistan um, that know how to build some really awesome, cool stuff. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, we've got Lisa over who heads up our, our, uh, our, L our SAS team, our LOS admin team, Lisa Perkins. <clears throat> We've got Drew and Blake over there, and we'll be adding to that team uh, most certainly this year. But in the meantime, let's talk about you. Let's talk about the community. Uh, a lot of things are going to be happening here. I was talking to Ice uh, Ice Rep earlier today, and uh, it's going to be March. Um, Ice is thinking about when exactly to do the final, the the uh, the actual release for 24.1, but it's going to be in March. So I hope we're going to get our pre-release notes, at least the pre-release notes. In February, I'll do the recording. I'll go through the run through um, like I always do with that on screen and video. There's going to be a ton. And, and keep in mind, you got to keep your eyes like in 55 places at once because um, you've got desktop updates and you've got, most importantly, web updates. Um, yeah, I think I'm with Amy. I think they're going to do what they've done in the past, which is to do the release the, the weekend of the conference because you know we're all going to be together in one spot it's kind of like putting all your executives in one plane and then the plane has lots of turbulence and lots of people are thinking about did we pay for key man insurance like are we going to be okay <clears throat> yeah what could possibly go wrong i know coming back from vermont so we in the northeast we had a nor'easter and um and so in uh my my was um uh, my wife and, and uh, me and uh, our two daughters and uh, son-in-law, they were in one car. My wife and I were in another car. And of course, my wife's mind goes right away. If something happens to that car, like all of our kids are in that car. And I'm like, come on. I'm like, can you really think like that? <laughs> I guess as a parent, you're supposed to, but yeah, you can't control, you can't control everything. Um, so anyway, listen, uh, you know, plugins, who doesn't, have a plugin in their Encompass environment. Um, I found a company, I worked with a company uh, the last year, 2023, the entire year. They've been on Encompass for four years, had no plugins. Um, they did a lot of CTP. I actually introduced them to plugins. I kind of like feel like a bad dude some days. Um, it's like, here, kid, take these plugins. Um, they use one, honestly. They use Knock Knock from ATI. And uh, because they, you know, they're in the files and they want to have access to the files. And so that's literally the only plugin. Now they do a batch update, but that's not a real plugin. It's, it's a standalone app. Um, yeah, and, and Luba, you know what? And that's probably my fault, right? So five years ago, I'm with Kenzie May and Kenzie May is all about plugins. Um, and they're not the only ones, right? There's lots of companies out there that just like plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in. And, um, and my attitude on plugins is it's like attaching, I don't know who rides bicycles, right, anymore, but um, how many do you really need, 
right? Do you really need all this special, all these bells and whistles because you think it's going to help? Um, or is it really a workflow problem? And Angie's like, we really only use three. Um, I can tell you that my, um, my guidance for you is if you didn't have the plugin, what would you do? And so one of the ones that comes up quite a bit is a home counseling service, right? So ICE is building that into your disclosures. Now in 2024, you're going to have home counseling automation built into your disclosures. Guess what? You don't need that plugin anymore. Um, you know, we are also, um, so we're doing something special with uh, Mace Innovations. Uh, you guys know Chris Mace, right? Don't call him Chris, call him Mace. Um, he's got his workflow product and um, we're actually uh, going to be doing a lot of stuff together and taking his workflow product and taking ATI's initial disclosure automation, sandwiching them together um, in the, as far as your experience. So basically you don't need a lot of these automations for business rules and all these other things because his product displays very plainly and easily um, what's missing. Um, and then we come in with uh, automation um, to, to basically do the disclosures. So Brian says uh, there are some field triggers that don't fire unless you hit save and a plugin can work before that. Well, um, Brian, you have an example of, of a field trigger that doesn't fire unless you hit save. I'd be interested to know more about that. Um, and we can talk more because, you know, that's, uh, that's an interesting situation. If you've got a field, yeah, if you've got a field value changing. Um, so now if you're doing stuff with like virtual fields and you want a virtual field to do something, um, you know, that could be a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm with Chris. Like there's, if, if you're not seeing something happen until you hit save, that sounds like it's a more of a DDM. Uh, field triggers don't work that way. Field triggers, hey, when that field changes, it's it's done. If it could have been fees, um, yeah, again, that's DDM, right? You, 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 if anybody's ever writing rules for itemization, it should only be in DDM. And by the way, you can fire DDM off field changes. You don't have, you know, keep in mind, DDM rules are based uh, natively off of either loan creation or loan save, but that's not the only way. You can run a DDM off a of field change. So if you're running into that, Brian, um, you know, heads up. Um, uh, so when you say you use Mace Innovations, yeah, it's it's very, very helpful. Uh, Candace says email triggers. The OB integration doesn't always trigger the rule until save. Well, that's an OB problem. Um, and so, yeah, if you've got um, OB integrating, but if OB writes something to the file, yeah, but if unless the data is committed in there from a third-party integration, yeah. Uh, but quite honestly, OB can't fire a plugin. So I'm, again, Candice, I'd like to maybe understand that better too. Um, so, you know, on this conversation of plugins and automation, I don't know if anybody has any questions, if anybody wants to come up on, come up on stage and kind of share your story of either um, having plugins that you don't use anymore and um, and what that's like, or needing a plug-in, but your business says we can't afford it, so figure it out, um, that kind of thing. And that's both for plugins as well as automation, um, because for me, all of this ties into workflow. And I can tell you, um, uh, you know, if, if you don't understand your workflow, you should not be thinking about plugins and you should not be thinking about automation. Uh, Angie says we have no automation besides USPS tool. Uh, and the good news is, Angie, on a web, again, it's a piece of JavaScript, so there is no more tool needed. So, you know, I don't know if you're paying anything for that anymore. I think now people are giving away for free anyway, because that's what it's worth anymore. Um, so, yeah, it's no longer needed on, on the web kind of a thing. It'll just go fetch uh, and do the uh, address. So here's the thing, and Angie says we aren't going to the web for a long time. I want you to really understand that you don't need to move your entire company to the web. OK, and I'm saying this because um, there's a lot of confusion on when you say encompass on the web. A lot of people, especially executives, they're like, we're never going to the web. We, we I don't know what the web is. And then you've got other companies um, that are web based that are pulling people in from encompass because they have exclusively done stuff on the web. 
So what I want you as admins, what I want you to really understand is that there is so much fundamentally changing with web settings that you don't necessarily have to go to the web, Angie, but that doesn't mean that you can't use web functionality to get rid of plugins that are replicated in native functionality. So I do want you to take that away, Angie, um, for the future as this year unfurls. I would encourage you to, to really invest time into web settings, especially workflow engine. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, I'm going to be doing uh, the reason why I've, I set this time up for only Tuesdays at four for live shows is because Thursdays uh, at one, I'm doing um, releases of basically of, of, of log. Um, and I'm going to be going into specific details where I'm explaining how things work or I'm interviewing somebody on how something works or we're doing a product demo or something along these lines that I think is really um, tangible for what people need to know or uh, might like to know, especially if it's other LOSs or other technologies that you might not normally be exposed to. Um, that's the reason why I created Mortgage Community was to make sure we've got more than just one voice in here, which is why I constantly ask for um, other companies uh, to come in and create content for you guys in the community. Um, so we've got Lodestar. Um, if you're not partnering with Lodestar, you should check them out. Um, if you're using anybody to import fees and it's not Lodestar, um, you should give them a good look this year. Um, so shout out to uh, to them. Um, Elena, oh, Elena, you're here. I didn't even, honestly didn't even know Elena was here, but yeah, Elena's there. So you could talk to Elena. She'll show you. Um, anyway, so I didn't see anybody on chat. Um, Elena, do you have, I know you don't really get into this conversation with companies because it's not your 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 conversation. But do you ever hear anybody talk, especially in the Encompass land, about how their Encompass sucks, quote unquote, um, from their perspective because of experience issues, because of how long Encompass takes to load or things like that, right? I had this conversation literally in admin training earlier today. And what I said to the to the admin group at that point is if you if you haven't if you haven't ever experienced Encompass with no plugins and you want to see what your company is like, remember that um, I got to I got to go open this door. Otherwise, this cat is going to scratch the, the glass. Um, if you've never if you're never if you're not quite sure what your company's experience could be like without plugins um, running in your Encompass, take a take a like a midnight on a on a Friday or Saturday. And down, go into your input form builder, go into your managed customizations, download all your plugins, store them in someplace safe. And when you know they're safe, go in and, and remove them from your input form builder. And then go restart your Encompass and then go record how long does it take you to open the loan, save, move between forms, do all that stuff. And if you've never done that, you really should. As admins, you should be doing this once a year. Um, uh, so when you say disable, so Luba asks, wouldn't disabling plugins do the same thing? Um, maybe, maybe. And I say that because a plugin is active every time you load, it's immediately active, whether or not it works and how it affects your, um, how it affects your experience. You would think disabling means that, but it still has to load if it's installed. So, Lou, but no, I would say if you really want to do this correctly, you would actually remove your plugins from your Encompass. Now, having said that, you'll want to make sure that if you're working with a third party and you've got a lot of plugins in there, that you let them know this is your plan just in case things go sideways. Because um, I don't know how all these plugins are built. Um, but, yeah, like Elena says, our instance is quite fast. If, if you guys want to see... Um, you know, if that's important for you, if you want to see what it looks like out of the box, that's all my Encompass is. So I open up a loan, you know, I log in, it takes me, I don't know, five seconds, 10 seconds to log in. I open a loan, it takes me about three to four seconds. I go, I flip between input forms uh, very quickly, including the 2015 itemization. And if you add up all the time that's spent going longer than those seconds across your, your organization by how many files are opened every day, you get a sense of how much money your company is spending on waiting. 
And um, and that's why I kind of go back to this convert this topic of plugins, automation, and workflow. Um, because if you've got a piece of technology loaded into your input form builder that you're not using in your workflow, why is it there? And then even worse, if your company's paying for it, you, you know, you want to go grab that money and use it for something else in your budget. So um, what I typically recommend, um, I, and, and I, I had this conversation this morning with one of our clients. We're doing a lot of automation projects for them. We're doing a lot of bullseye uh, business intelligence products uh, projects with them. And they started months ago. And um, quite honestly, the project is not where I would want it to be um, if I was running the project from the beginning. And what I asked, what I asked the client, and this is important for you as admins, I think, is what I asked the client, like, if you can go back in time, you know, what we, what could we have done differently? And the conversation was document the workflow. For those of you that have been around me for enough, you've heard me say workflow before technology like ad nauseum. But I cannot stress enough that in 2024, when you're looking at leveraging Encompass on the web settings, which has to do with enhanced conditions, has to do with workflow tasks, has to do with workflow engine, and has to do with uh, EPC for your vendors. Um, you've got to understand how your company is going to be using that in your workflow. And if you're not, you're, you're honestly, you're, you're running into a problem. You're going to run into a problem, hands down. Um, because you need to understand how your company is going to be using this technology so that you can support it properly. Hey, Elena, quick question for you. Are you guys fully on EPC yet or are you still um, in review mode or whatever, whatever the mode is? Um, for the automation, I know you're in manual or maybe even easy order, but are you in automated yet or is that still on the on the docket uh, in review? Okay, cool. I, I figured you'd make a big announcement. Um, but like a good example is if you're leveraging Lodestar and you'd want them to be to automatically pull in title fees, even if um, even if it was enabled and Elena's holding back, she's obviously not doing it fast enough. I'm kidding. Um, so even if it was able to be automated, if it's not in your workflow properly, you're not going to use it or it's going to be used incorrectly. Uh, and so that's what I, you know, when I, when I go to this, when I go back to this conversation and I sit down with um, admins in, in either a review capacity or a support capacity or a project capacity, I'm always going to come back to you and say, what's your workflow for this? Um, what's your workflow for that? Um, anybody have any good stories about how you created something in Encompass? You thought it was super cool and then your business never used it because they changed their minds about their workflow. Like I'm, I'm sure everybody's got something on that end. Uh, maybe you want to talk about it. Maybe you don't. But the, uh, the idea is that, Sometimes companies don't even realize what they're doing until you go to make a change. And then they go, well, wait a minute. Why do we do it that way? Uh, reads like, seems like it happens two times a week. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, right? Did uh, Brian says did some great custom print forms and then they moved to DocuSign. Sorry, Brian. Don't mean to laugh. Um, but you got paid, right? I mean, seriously, like everybody's getting a paycheck. Um, it's annoying, but you're still getting paid. But what if you weren't? What if you had a paycheck that was dependent upon the company using what you developed? You would want to make sure that the company doesn't get the wrong thing developed. And I, and I think from a stewardship perspective, uh, again, it's important to make sure that we're, we're treating the company's money as if it were our own. We've seen a lot of our, our friends, um, possibly even family, have a tough time over the last couple of years because companies ran out of money to, to make payroll. And so they lay people off or they reduce positions. And I'm not suggesting that, you know, saving $100 here or $1,000 there a month is going to make a difference, but it does make a difference some way. <clears throat> and so when I come back, to, again, going back to this topic for today, um, automation is great. Like I can do... I can do initial disclosure automation for any size company under three bucks a uh, three bucks a file. Done. 
like from start to finish, ordering all these services through Bucks file. I know our, our, the alternatives out there are much more expensive. And the reason why I promote this kind of cost concept is because I know what things cost and I know what budgets are and I need to make things as um, open and accessible as possible. Not everybody's got $30,000 to spend on a project. Like it's just not realistic. And so when I look at that though, if you're not using a service that we can um, fully integrate with, or uh, I forget who it was earlier. Um, b -b 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 Suin. So Suin does, uh, does, you know, Mesa's workflow product. And what that does is it makes it much easier to do disclosures because you take a lot of these uh, guesses out of what's right or wrong. But now if instead of having somebody click a button and wait for the disclosure engine to go through, we can have a digital worker do that. That saves time, especially if it's only $3 a file, right? It saves a ton of time. Something else that we're doing that, again, is, is talking about this automation that's um, economical is the automatic retrieval of disclosures from, um, from signed disclosures. So that's something that I never even considered was a big deal until I got reminded um, this past week that literally it's someone's job on the wholesale side to go there and click retrieve disclosures or retrieve. And they have to sit there and, and wait for the whole thing to download. And then they have to click auto assign. They have to wait for that. And then they have to do some other stuff. And it takes a ton of time. And you can't scale on that if you don't have automation. And so that's the kind of stuff that I look at and be like, that makes sense. Um, getting a plugin that does coloring, it's crap. Like it's just no one needs coloring anymore. Like maybe that was something 10 years ago. Um, if somebody's doing a plugin to do something else that's natively available, it's unnecessary. Uh, and so, you know, those are the kinds of things I want to bring up to the community and really just get your gears turning on on ways. Um, so, hoping to see if anybody had any any uh, 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 conversation about you know what they're doing and how they're reviewing their plugin list and what it costs and what it does and is it worth it to keep. Sean added in the comments here, uh, Larry, I don't get a chance to get on these calls super often, so maybe you've done this already. Have you shown your automation in process like a demo for the group? I'm doing that this month, Sean. Um, so part of the reason I moved to only li doing live shows Tuesday is because I wanted to leave Thursday for replays. And so Thursday I'm going to be doing um, not just that. It's like not just products, but it's like how does this thing actually help? And um, I also want to bring in other companies. Like uh, we're going to be doing one with Mace. Um, I want to come back and redo this thing with Elena with you when you get your automation done, so people understand that. Um, you know, we've done the thing in the past with Jody on on Power BI. Um, I want to show Bullseye and how that works. So I want to take Thursday and use that as a way to kind of distribute information, like 15 to 20 minute calls or something like that, and then take Tuesdays and make it as an open conversation. Does that, does that sound cool, Sean? Um, when is the Mace one? I don't know. Soon. Soon. He and I have talked about it. Like last, it was funny. It was it was ironic because last year, um, it was the first time Mortgage Workflow Partners was at the ICE conference. And they put Mortgage Workflow Partners right next to Mace Innovations. And his product was called Workflow. So everybody was confused by like Workflow, Workflow. Um, so I saw it for the first time last March. And um, he's been really working on it, refining it all year. He's got um, some really good companies using it. We actually ended up having a mutual client using it where they used his to clean, to clean it up. And then that same client used us to automate the disclosures. And it was um, super sweet, completely unintended consequence. Like, uh, like the old, uh, uh, if you're old enough like me, the old, uh, um, uh, what the heck was the Reese's the Reese's peanut butter cup where the the chocolate fell on the peanut butter fell into the chocolate? You guys probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but anyway, we just kind of fell together, and so it's pretty cool. <clears throat> Amy's like, I remember that one. A Amy, don't show your age. You're not as old as me. You're way younger. Uh, Candace remembers that too. Okay. Uh, Anything else coming up? Like I've been looking, I think it was chocolate that fell. Yeah, see, I don't, I'm remembering it wrong because uh, I'm old. I'm <laughs> remembering it wrong. 
Uh, Jody's like, hey, got chocolate in my peanut butter. He's got, yeah, that was it. Jody's got it right. See, leave it to the data warehouse guy. He's, he's got he's got the the brain that remembers it all. Um, anyway, I uh, appreciate you guys coming to these these. You know, we usually have twenty some odd folks. Um, let me know what other companies you'd love to hear from. You know, part of my my thing with ATI is I get to play with other systems. So, uh, you know, uh, Meridian Link is uh, is a company that we've got a relationship with and they've got two LOS platforms. They've got Meridian link and they've got open close, which are interesting to talk about. Um, we've also got a relationship with bite. Uh, and that's, that's an interesting one to talk about. Um, lending pad is another one that is kind of out there. Um, I've talked with, uh, with Wes, uh, who owns lending pad about doing some stuff for the community. I just want to make sure you're getting value out of the community. Um, and part of that is hearing more people on different voices and different opinions um and and getting you value so um so and yeah it, it, and um i am too um so what happened was i i met them for the first time right before right up between christmas and new year's and um and their training is 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 really there's a big gap and so i showed them you know that i created kenzie may university and um, you know, all that stuff, you know, years ago. And I said, well, here's what we're doing today. Here's how we're actually training people today. And I showed it in the community. So um, I'm trying to get them interested in doing that. Uh, so, yeah, if you know anybody over there and you'd be like, yeah, hey, you should guys should come into the mortgage community um, to help people learn more about the product. Um, that would be great. See you. So there you go. Um, so I got for today. I don't have to go 30 minutes if I don't have any content, but that's, you know, my, my thing for you, my, my summary here is document what plugins you have that you're using. Most importantly, check with your accounting team to see what you're actually paying for. You might be surprised. Check to see what automations you're using. Um, and when I say automations, I don't just mean inside of Encompass. Automations are things, again, that your company is paying for or has paid for that's updating data. If you're not quite sure if you're, you know, what you're using for that, um, go check your uh, either your full diagnostic mode or go check your JIT log as you're going through a file to see what else is happening in your file without a human doing the work. Um, and then the last thing I've said this a lot: take the time to at least document one of your department's workflows, um, especially somebody you know. Good departments to pick on are ones that are super thin and ones that are super thick. Meaning if you've got one or two people doing a, a, a single function for your for every loan file, that's a great place to go for workflow review. Or if you've got a full team of people, um, I know you pick processing is usually a good one. Um, you know, pick somebody who's always super busy and pick somebody who's generally not so busy and ask them the same questions. If you, um, if you don't know what to ask, what I do when I do workflow reviews for companies is I just have them tell me what they do. And maybe it's a little awkward for you or you're not used to doing it. Um, if they're in an office, just go up and talk to them. Like I, I really I really do that. Uh, I really do miss that, the in-person thing. Because I'll go up and I'll spend a day in an office and I'll just go from department to department, documenting what's happening and seeing what's going on and taking away uh, good notes of opportunities for change. Um, you know, whether it's improvements or a change to the system, because I want to do what that person's doing. I want other people to do, too. So it doesn't have to be, you know, change for the better. Sometimes, you know, sometimes somebody figured something out that you can learn from. Uh, and then, you know, put that all together into a successful 2024. It's going to go by quick, gang. I'm telling you right now, this year is going to fly. We're going to be busy. Production's going to pick up um, regardless of what your company's doing. New programs are going to come out. And, uh, and uh, I hope the community is here to support you. I know I will be. And for those coming to ICE show, if you're going to be the wrap-up show, that's Thursday. It's from 10 a.m. local to 3 p.m. local. It's an open door. Come as you can. Go as you need to. And uh, more to come on that in the coming days. But that's uh, just RSVP to me. If you haven't already, I'd let me know you're interested so I can put you on the list. I think we have about 15 or, or so people now. Definitely need to just RSVP, uh, John. Um, let me know. I, I'm, I, yeah. 
There you go. So, and if I don't see you there, uh, hopefully we'll see you someplace else. You guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks always for coming. Have a good week. Bye, gang. Thank you.